Hi everyone, welcome again. In this video, we are going to learn how to build a REST API with Spring Boot. We will not build the entire API in one go, but we will be following a step by step approach. So, in this video, we'll start with a basic setup. We'll set up a Spring Boot project, then we'll understand how to use two annotations REST controller and get mapping. And in the subsequent videos, we will add more features to this API. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the future updates. So let's get started. The first step is to set up the project. To do that, we'll use Spring Initializer. I'm going to use the Spring Initializer plugin in IntelliJ, but you can do the same thing on their website. It will be a Maven project. Then we'll add the group, which is my username, artifact. So spring rest, we are going to name it spring rest and everything else is fine. I'm just going to change the package name like this, hit next and we need to add the dependencies now. To develop the rest API, we need to add spring web dependency, hit next and hit create. This will now set up a spring web project. So the project setup is now complete, including all the dependencies. Let's verify the pom.xml. Here we have the pom.xml. And in the pom.xml, we see the starter web, which is the dependency that we need for REST API. And in the source folder, we have the empty application.property file, this one. And then we have the main class generated by the Spring Boot. And if we run this main program, Notice that because it's a Spring Web application, Spring Boot automatically configured a Tomcat server. So if you notice in the logs, it started the Tomcat server on the default port, which is 8080. So we have a web server running on our local machine using Spring Boot. And we didn't have to do anything extra. We just added the Spring Web dependency. We will utilize this feature to build our own API. Before we start building an API, we need to understand few basic things about APIs. Almost all the APIs expose resources. Now, resource could be anything. It could be a document. It could be some traffic information. It could be some weather information. So, for example, Google has dedicated APIs related to Google Docs. And a client can use those APIs in order to upload some document or download some documents. In the same way, Amazon and Azure, they have their own APIs for, let's say, blob storage. So, we can use those APIs to work with blobs to work with storage and in the same way whatever api we are building it will expose a resource it could be some transaction data it could be a student it could be an employee whatever it is it will be a resource now these resources are accessed via uris each resource is available at a certain location and because rest uses http calls rest under the hood uses http specification so these uris are basically HTTP URLs. As you can see here, it's a sample URI for a resource which is available at this location. So this is the base address of the API where you will find the API. Then this is the URL path where you will find that particular resource. So in order to access the resource, REST clients, they make HTTP calls. It could be HTTP GET or POST depending on the operation supported by the API. And then accordingly, the API service will listen the requests, it will process the request, and it will return the response back to the client. Okay, so in this video, our target is to build an API that will return the health information of the API. In this case, because the service is running on the local host and it's using port 8080, so the address will be localhost colon 8080. That will be the address of our API which will be available at this location. So if a client is making an HTTP call to localhost colon colon 8080, the service will be able to capture that request. Now, in order to return the health information, we will expose an endpoint and the URI of that endpoint will be health. So we will build an API that will return the health information if a client is hitting this URL. How do we do that? In order to build any API using Spring Boot, we need to first write the controller. To do that, we'll add a new package and I'll name it 
controller and in this controller we'll create a new class and we'll name it health controller it's a simple java class now the important thing is we need to annotate it with the annotation rest controller it's a special annotation that tells Spring Boot that this particular class is able to handle the incoming request and it will return some response back to the client. And an application can have multiple controllers for different types of requests. In this case, because we are going to have a single endpoint which is health, we'll create a single controller and we have annotated this controller with at the rate rest controller. That is the first step in building any API. We need to write a controller and we need to annotate it with this annotation. Okay, now that we have defined the controller, Spring Boot knows that yes, there is a class, there is a controller that can handle the incoming requests. But how does it actually process the request? To do that, we need to write a method, we need to map the method. And that method will be a plain Java method in this class. So for example, because we have to return the health status, we can write a simple method that will return a string. We can name it health status and it will return a simple string status up which is hard coded okay so we have the controller class and we have a method that will return the status but how do we actually bind it so that if the client is making a request to this controller or to this api this method will actually be invoked and it will return this up response to do that we need another annotation which is get mapping Get mapping is another special annotation that is used on the methods and this annotation is used to bind the method to a certain URL pattern and HTTP method. Here because we are using get mapping it means it will be invoked if the client is making an HTTP get call and the URL matches with the pattern. Right now there is no URL mentioned in this case but if we go back remember that we have to expose this information at this endpoint. So we need to define somewhere this health URL pattern. We can do that using get mapping. It accepts a parameter and will say like this. If we provide this much information to Spring Boot, Spring Boot knows that there is one controller that can handle the incoming request. It will further check and see there is a method which is annotated as get mapping. It means it can intercept HTTP get calls coming to this API. The next step would be to match the URL. It will see if the client is making this particular API call using this URL then it knows that it can bind this method to this incoming call and in that case it will execute this particular method which will return up back to the client but let's say if the client is using any other URL let's say this one health12 which does not match with this pattern in this case Spring Boot cannot call this method because it has to match the pattern as well so what we did, we created a controller class. We used at the rate rest controller annotation on that class. Then we have this method which is annotated as get mapping and we define the URL pattern on the get mapping method. Then we are simply returning the string status. So we have a very basic API and we can try running this API. So let's do that. If I run the main program, you see that the server is up and running. It is running on the default port, which is 8080. How do we test it? To test this, we need to make a call to this URL so that it can match the URL pattern and it can call this method because it's a get request. So we can use the browser. So let's do that. So if we open the browser and if we type this and hit enter, we see the value up. What happened in this case? In this case, browser is acting as a client. So it is making this HTTP get call on this URL and the call was captured by the API which is running on our local machine and it was able to map the URL pattern and it invoked this particular method which returned a string value and that string value we see on the browser as a response. And with this we have a very basic API up and running on our local machine. Now that we have the basic idea how to develop a REST API using Spring Boot we will start adding more features to this API. But that's it for now. Stay tuned for next videos. Thanks for watching.